on the 29th of November, 1967, Australia joined the Space Club of Nations by successfully launching from its own soil an Earth satellite of its own making. The project, which evolved from a program of upper atmosphere research that has continued over many years, was a joint effort of the Weapons Research Establishment and University of Adelaide. Design and manufacture of the satellite was conditioned by the short duration of the project, which from acceptance to launching day was only 11 months. The launching vehicle to be used was a US Sparta three-stage rocket, one of a series that had been fired at Woomera for research purposes. The satellite was so designed that both the third stage of the rocket and the instrumented nose cone would go into orbit together without separation. In all, three satellite cones were made. The first as a model for the structural design, the second as a space model to check the internal arrangement and accessibility of components, and the third as the actual flight model. The structure was of strong ring and stringer construction, braced by an aluminium outer skin 48 thousandths of an inch thick. Loads of up to 1,000 pounds were applied progressively at seven points on the structure to simulate the forces arising from acceleration. Over 70 strain gauges were used to measure the deformations produced. Drop tests were done to simulate the effects of acceleration with short rise time, such as might occur during launch or the firing of the upper stages. The design allowed for acceleration up to 40 G. Vibration tests were carried out on the flight cone. The cone was subjected to a spectrum of vibrations which would encompass all frequencies likely to be met with in flight. Measurements of accelerations in longitudinal and transverse directions were made on this centrifuge. The structural cone that was used included components and sub-assemblies. Extensive modifications to the WRE centrifuge and careful balancing adjustments were made prior to these tests. In these torsional impact tests, the shock forces achieved during the sudden braking simulated those that would be caused when the spin-up motors were fired. Here, tests were being made of the mechanism which ejected the protective plate covering the instruments that were exposed to solar radiations during flight. The plate was spun off by the centrifugal force arising from the rotation of the cone. Experiments carried in the satellite were designed to extend the range of data obtained previously from research programs in which sounding rockets were used to probe the upper atmosphere. The satellite experiments were designed to use ionization chambers and detectors to measure solar radiation in X-ray and ultraviolet wave bands. Such information contributes to knowledge of solar terrestrial relationships and in particular the way in which solar radiations influence the composition and structure of the upper atmosphere. An energy dissipator, consisting of a closed loop of aluminium tubing filled with silicone oil, was fitted to change the axis of satellite spin quickly so that the sideways and forward-facing experiments would be exposed to the sun as the satellite spun. A number of precautions were taken to protect the cone and its contents from extremes of heat and cold. As a protection against aerodynamic heating during launch, one eighth inch sheet cork painted black was fixed to the surface of the cone where protrusions occurred. The remaining surface was also painted black so that a suitable balance would be achieved in orbit between heat absorption and emission. Internally, the cone was painted white to promote uniformity of temperature and a shroud of aluminium foil and glass cloth was placed over the third stage motor to shield the interior of the cone and instrumentation from its heat. To further simulate space conditions, the flight cone was subjected to hot and cold soak in a vacuum chamber. Here, under atmospheric pressure of 5 millimeters of mercury, the temperature was varied between minus 15 and 50 degrees centigrade in a seven-hour cycle for a number of days. Final preparation involved the checking of weight and moments of inertia about the various axes. These are fundamental properties which determine the orbit and attitude of satellite. The total mass placed in orbit was 186 pounds. 
The satellite cone was now complete. Before sending it to the firing range at Woomera, it was taken to Canberra to the Auroral Valley Tracking Station. Here, the cone was placed in a screened room and careful checks were made which demonstrated its compatibility with the ground receiving equipment. The Auroral Valley Station is one of the US global network of such stations that would track the satellite when in orbit. With the arrival of the reset cone from Canberra, final checks and assembly were begun. The cone was checked out and explosive components were fitted. The sensors received a final check using a hydrogen light source rich in ultraviolet. The space between was flushed with nitrogen gas to prevent oxygen absorption. The radar transponder received a final check. Finally, the covers were fitted, the nose cone was screwed down and reset was ready. It was then taken to the launching area for mating to the rocket. Here, with great care, to the relief of some and the confusion of the skeptics, it mated up perfectly, and the whole assembly was ready for launching. Erection was completed, the umbilical cord was attached. Through this cord, monitoring functions were maintained and power was supplied to ignite the rocket engines. In the nearby control van, missile functions were checked. When all was well, the countdown began. The optical tracker had a hazy view of the launcher scene due to the high ground temperature. As the countdown proceeds, the heater cooler drop tank is shed. Light up. Lift off. passes through an atmospheric layer of high humidity. The line of fire is six degrees east of north. The tracking camera loses the missile, finds it again. The first stage is all burnt. It separates and falls away into the Simpson Desert. The second stage was destined to fall into the Gulf of Carpentaria to the north of Australia, but heating on re-entry may have burned it up. Its fall was not observed. Final injection into orbit occurred at latitude 27 degrees 30 minutes south.